the tables, if I want to insert a table, it's the icon there, just at the top here. So I can select my rows, columns, etc. Click on the plus and it will add it onto the screen. Our table's free flowing, so I could rotate it with two fingers, enlarge, shrink, etc. And again, I can double tap to put it back to zero. I can drag and drop content to auto resize into there. Resize it. I can place it wherever I like. So it's a free flowing table function at that point. Back to my pages. So now I'm going to insert an image and a video. Uh, and I'm going to refer to saved photos and videos. This little coloured flower here, just at the top, that then goes into my uh, photos uh, on my computer. And now we can just put any photo in if we want to, but what I'm going to do is select a 360 photo that I've got. Now if I just shrink this photo, it's going to put it at zero. Now what we've got here, this will work the same for a 360 video, we have a panoramic function. So if I right click or use the square, it's the same tool, click panoramic, the photo has now gone into a 360 mode as if I was wearing a headset. And what I can do is just use my finger to guide, have a look around, and this will make it a little bit more engaging for the students to come up at the board and explore the photo as opposed to just seeing it as a still image. Like I said, it works the same for 360 videos as well, and there are a lot on the internet that you can use. I'm going to add a video, so the icon here. Now I've got options of internet-based videos, if I've got a connected webcam, any sound files, or the movie clicker will now look for videos that I might have on my share drive. Uh, so I'm going to look for some videos on here. Lots of options. So let's pick that one. So with the videos, again, it's free flowing. So I can put this, do what I want with this video. I don't have to take up the whole screen. I could shrink it over there, select my pen, whatever pen options, and I can write on the screen as that video is going on. We can even write over the top of that video may be useful if I change my pen colour at this point. And we can talk about what's going on there. We don't have to take up the whole slide. What you could do with the videos as well, I'll just delete my pens there. You could keep all your videos just on one side and then bring them in as or when you want to. It's just that little bit more engaging and the students will like to do that themselves. Going to delete this video because I was talking about saved photos and videos. The other option that you have, we've got a tab here called Media Search, and what this brings up is an option to search for images, YouTube's GIFs, or clip art that sit on Google and Bing Safe Search. I've just searched for cats. Um, we can search for anything we want, and then it's a case of just dragging the photo over. It's doing the whole copy and paste for you. I can resize that. I can do what I want with that photo. And again, it brings up a whole list of options and we can go through different pages to find what we want. If I wanted a YouTube video, but for the same purpose, click on the icon, click YouTube, it's now gonna find YouTube videos. Drag over the YouTube video, it's gonna do the embedding for me. You may have to give it a few seconds for your internet to um, catch up, buffer it. And now I've got my YouTube video. Again, I can do what I want with that. Play upside down if I really want to. But all of those videos, photos, GIFs, clip art, it will do the whole copy and paste for you. You don't have to leave your lesson content to get some media off the internet. And let's face it, whenever you go to YouTube, you are distracted, the students are distracted, whatever else is on the screen.